All right. We're live. What's going on, everybody? Welcome. This is Daryl the Finisher. What's up, all my folks out in YouTube land? Okay. All right. Today, we're going to talk about lead generation companies. And the thing is, let me get this straight real quick. Trying to uh, get this thing going. Switch cam, what's going on? <laughs> Hadoosie, we hate them. I mean, we definitely, there's definitely no love on, on my end for lead generation companies. But what I always like to do is I just like to have the discussion. You know, everybody has a different experience. Hey, what's going on, Ray? You know, everybody has a different experience with them. I, most people I, I I personally know that work with them. I only really know one person that that uses them exclusively. But most of the people I know don't have a good situation with lead generation companies, right? But I figure, hey, I'm, I'm you know I'm always full. Ex you know, um, I you know when I started. It was one of the ways where, you know, I got business. Just being, you know, just being honest. So now a lot of, a lot, a lot has changed since then. You know, the lead generation companies have, you know, they got a taste of that money and then they started getting uh, more and more shady. Hey, uh, Jeremy Fish, what's going on, man? So I just figure it's one of those things that, you know, I, you see the questions. There's, there's new guys coming in all the time into the business. And and it doesn't matter which which business you really do, whether it's um whether it's the handyman business that I'm in, or whatever plumbing in in HVAC and and I, it really doesn't matter. Um, you know everybody uses lead generation companies, and somebody's using them, <laughs> you know, or they just wouldn't be around here. So, you know, we want to just I don't know, just have a little discussion about them. So. Let's go. Let's just go into the first ones. I got a little list of the main ones. There's a ton of them. There are new ones that are trying to get started. There's a bunch of them out here. So we we, we all know the, the main one that everybody always talks about. All right. And of course, that's Angie. And Angie, if you don't know, Angie was its own company. It was Angie's List. And there was a different company called Home Advisor, which I think at some time was a um, had another name even before it was Home Advisor. But I can't remember right now. And then now they even have something called Handy uh, Angie Services, which was uh, used to be called Handy.com, and now it's Angie Services. And they essentially, I, I'm not sure the name of the parent company. They own a bunch of different companies, but they own, they bought all three of these and then merged them all into just Angie. And then it all, everything's just started to change, you know? Um. Matt and Kim Harris, I use Thumbtack and I like it. That see, that's what I'm saying. Like, and there, and I'm gonna talk about Thumbtack. And there's there's a reason why I think that it's even with the changes that they've made, I still think it's better than the Angie services. Home wrapper repair, howdy howdy. Hey, what's going on? How you doing? So I guess Angie, Angie ads, what the, what used to be um Angie's list is now Angie ads. And that's the one that's kind of the functionality it took. Well, a Angie ads, the way it used to work. And I, and I'm pretty sure it still works the same way is that you, you build a whole profile. I mean, you, you pay your money up front because they all want you to pay when they used to call me. I don't know how much they charge now, but I remember that at one time they were like, their lowest package was like $300 a month. Um, but they wanted the whole year up front <laughs> and they're going to guarantee you a certain amount of leads. I mean, it was only like, 15 leads, something, something low for, for $30, $300 a month. But with their service, you basically build a, built a profile. They put you online and then the customers went in and the customers picked the contractor, right? That when I first started, I had signed up for it and I wasn't even getting any money. I was just, uh, I was just on there and I had a couple customers that just called me 
from being on Angie's from being on Angie's list. Now, and as I said, when I started before they had they had merged and called themselves Angie Ads. And so the customers were reaching out to me. You know, I mean, even back in the day, you had to pay, I think, to be a member of Angie's list as a customer, you had to pay five dollars a month or something like that. But even that little five dollars, when a customer paid that five dollars, then that was a customer <laughs> that was actually serious about finding a contractor. That little five dollars made it made a world of difference. But you know, now I think that's how Angie's ads is, is pretty much still the same. You know, they they set up a profile and but you can but you also still receive leads. I know they do um pre what is it? They have stuff that you can um get your pricing upfront pricing. So it is definitely different. Now I you know I never used Angie ads or the you know formerly Angie's list, but when they first started, I knew a lot of guys back before built businesses, massive businesses using this system. Um and it just went downhill. Now, Angie Leads, that's that's the one I had the most experience with because it was Home Advisor when I started. And Home Advisor, <laughs> it wasn't bad when I started. I mean, I, I could say this. The, you know, under the handyman leads. Now, this is the problem with being a handyman on those leads, too, is that, I mean, on that platform is that they take whatever leads don't fit in the other categories and dump them in the handyman leads, right? Now, believe it or not, when I first got on Home Advisor, I, they must have been super. This is 2018. They must have been super desperate for for handyman because they had a. I, I got them. Man, they gave me a deal for fifty dollars a month for unlimited leads. Now, the leads were trash. I mean, the leads were like. You had to literally go through 15 leads to get like one decent customer because you'd get one person that was calling and just had a bunch of uh, a list of a bunch of things that they wanted to do, get done at their house. Then you'd have uh, at that time, even in the handyman leads, they included uh, small appliances. So like over the over the range microwave installs and range hoods and stuff like that. They, they included that in the handyman leads like for free. So it that. Even though I had to, I had to call so many people, and it was so many jobs. And at that time, you know, I was the idiot that I was going to different companies. I mean, I was going to like every estimate, like a like a ridiculous person. So I had, I mean, I probably wasted more money driving in my first year to leads that were never actually going to be anything, just because they came on uh, Home Advisor or whatever. But then they started changing. And it just it just switched into something else once they got bought out. The leads used to be like they had things divided. Say say um stuff that wasn't included in the handyman leads like door installations, right? Door installations would be split into like different parts. So you'd have storm doors were were one lead category, interior doors were another category, exterior doors were another category. Like they really broke this thing down where. <laughs> You couldn't just be a door specialist, which I was trying to sign up for. Then they broke it down further, which started to get on my nerve. They, they had stuff like um, what well, exact match leads. So say an exterior door lead was $12. Well, but then if it was an exact match lead, it was $18. What was an exact match? I don't know. Because you would think that meant that they just only went to you or something like that. But no, no, it was an exact match, but they still sent them to other contractors. So and they they would charge you know eighteen bucks as soon as they sent it, and another problem with them is that they charge you and then it's really difficult to get that refund if you get a bad lead. Like I don't know what the problem is. I'm like you're. I'd have I'd had arguments with them on the phone where you know my account is in good standing. Uh, I wanted to you done gave me a contractor of the year every year for like three years. And I need a refund. It's a bad lead. And they just, I don't know. They just wouldn't do it. They just, oh, no. Well, you know, you reached the limit or something. We rec They just, they couldn't do it anymore. That's when things started to get on my nerves. They got a lot shadier. I did a video about it um, where once they started doing leads in-house or once they acquired handy.com, then they started competing against the contractors directly. And then 
they got to the point where they were closing leads. <laughs> they were closing leads. I would call. I, I literally get the lead, you know, sent to my phone. And I would call the customer right then, right then. And then the customer would pick up and they'll be like, how you doing? Oh, so you're, you know, the customer would think I was calling to schedule the job. And I would say, no, well, no, I've never, this is the first time I've called. I've never talked to you. They say, oh, well, I'd already paid over the phone with Ange, with, uh, with Home Advisor, already, already paid over the phone. So I'm like, Home Advisor was starting to send me leads that they already got. They, the Home Advisor locked the lead in on their end already. And then they were sending me the lead, you know, even though they already locked in the customer. I'm like, it's, that's insane. That's since now you're just taking my money. <laughs> so I was on a crusade, man, where Home Advisor got just, just got just thumbs down, man. I just Home Advisor. And then, of course, Angie Services is, is kind of like, like handy.com where you'll, you'll get their smaller uh, things, but they, uh, whereas you know TV hanging TVs and things of that nature to furniture install or you, you might they might need a handyman for two hours to do you know little stuff around the house but it's them deciding the price and then they're they'll put it out to you and then ask you do you want to you know you want to take this job it's almost like a doordash type thing and um you know so that's what they all turn into Angie services <sighs> And it's crazy because they still called me. To, they ended up, they they just, um, I don't know. I think somebody realized I was getting like $50 a month for unlimited leads. And then one day I just got a, <laughs> I got a, um email that said they were changing their program. And then a day after that, they just said I was kicked out of the program and would I like to sign up for something else? And I didn't, I hadn't messed with them since it's been, it's been a while now. It's been a couple, like a couple of years, but that's my experiences with Angie services. I mean, I, they're the ones I'll be honest. I couldn't recommend them to anybody starting out. Um, so many people just have had bad experiences with them. Uh, you know, just, or then I know there's a lot of people where the leads, I, I ran into a contractor on a job once where I was working and he was bidding a, a, a hardwood floor job. And we'd end up talking outside. He, he was on Angie or home advisor at the time. He was like, he, he got that lead cost him. It was like $120 and they just depending on your business and what you're doing. They just, it seems like there's no rhyme or reason. They just charge people, whatever they want for leads. So I don't know. I, I can't mess with it. So, um, oh, let me check this. Philip Davis. Hello from Columbia, Georgia. Did you get your LLC? first to set up your business and if so what would your handyman business fall under with the code they asked for when applying for the llc oh goodness we talking about this like the nnc something whatever code i off the top of my head i don't know i don't know you they, they have a list i think it's the nc i know it's not ncis you know i'm thinking of course that's the first thing that comes to my mind let me i guess i'm on a computer right i guess i can look it up what is it, the NC? Oh, NA, NAICS code? Yeah. I'm assuming that's what you're talking about is the, NA, the NAICS code. And that one, you, you kind of just pick it. You can put it in and, you know, now what for what I am in my state, I'm, I fall under like remodel contractor and, you know, things of that nature. So I'm not sure in, in your state or whatever, but I thought it, I think it's pretty sure it's federal. So, but you look through that list and you can find that uh, put in like titles and stuff, home improvement contractor. You can, there's all sorts of things you can put in that, that, you know, you would fall under depending on what kind of work you do. Um, Matt and Kim Harris, microwave, microwave and dish, uh, well, sure, installs pay nice. They do. They do. And I'm going to talk about that because uh, the next one, and this is one that I actually like. It's a lead generation company that I actually like. Was, is Home Depot's Pro Referral. Now, there are a lot of people, I, I've heard other contractors that said that the customers are cheap. Um, and I did experience a couple of months ago when, when, when business was um, when like, you know, business had slowed down uh, quite a bit. 
that <laughs> people were getting cutthroat. Contractors were getting cutthroat on home home uh, on pro referral with Home Depot, where I would go for a dishwasher install, and man, I might tell somebody, you know, I don't know, I might give them a price for two hundred on the uh, for the dishwasher install, and um, appliance like appliance dealers were undercutting that. No, they were like, oh no, nah, I think they're charging like one sixty five. I was like, oh, that hurt my chest. One sixty five. What, what are we doing? So I don't know. I don't know. But I, you know, I had a season uh, at one time where I did so many dishwashers through, and I still, I mean, I, you know, I don't really do many of the leads, but man, every day almost I get something on Home Depot Pro referral for dishwashers and and what and i like about home depot pro referral it doesn't cost you anything except you shop at the store so you stop at the store whatever money you spend i don't know if they match it in points or i think it's double so if i spend 15 dollars, i think you get 30 points and then the points is what you pay for the leads with so you don't really it's no money really coming out of your pocket which which i like because just like any any other one you're gonna get leads that that go nowhere so at least you didn't pay actual money for them. Instead, you paid for what your points. So I like it. And then you reach certain tiers and they give you little bonuses. And but I, you know, um, with Home Depot. So pro referral, I like it. And they also then now they do require a background check. And um, and they do have certain things like as a I'm on I'm on pro referral as a as a handyman as a general contractor, as a carpenter, and as appliance installation, the appliance repair, or appliance guy. And But for two of those, the general contractor and a carpenter, I was on hold. They had me on hold for on a wait list for a man. It was at least it was probably a year. And then one day I just got an email. They must have opened up a spot and then uh, just moved me, in, moved me into it. So... That's where you see, if you ever see me do, like I'll do videos doing shower doors and things of that nature. Most of those come through Home Depot uh, Pro Referral. And I like it. Like I said, you can you can make good money with it. And like I said, it doesn't cost you money out of pocket. So when you're first starting, you know, you're not killing yourself uh, with having to pay all these extra expenses. Uh, Ray, Ray Duke, I used Handy the first few months in business. Didn't pay much, but kept me afloat while I figured things out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like those kind of like those task rabbit things like that, where they're small jobs, but it's like what I don't like to do is bef like right from the start, just say, Hey, don't, don't use any of the lead generation companies ever just because, you know, it's, it could be difficult to fill up, a full week for worth of work. And then of course, when you're first starting, if you don't, if you don't know what you're supposed to be charging and none of that, you can get yourself in a, in a, in a bad situation, you know, just, and it caused yourself a lot of heartache and headache. That's unnecessary. If you could just use this lead generation company just for a few jobs, you know what I mean? You don't, you're not going to, you're still not going to base your whole business around it. You're just using it to get you by. And then, Hey, maybe you get off of those. I have a, I had a lot of customers that I have to this day that I got when I was using Home Advisor. You know, I mean, I, what, I, what I didn't only use Home Advisor and, oh, and Home Depot. And then also when I was first starting out, like when, you, when you're early in it, it helped me to have credibility because people would, well, Home Depot gave me your number. Sometimes it wouldn't, they would just call me. I had the people from the store just call me with the customer standing there with them. And it gives you that credibility, like man, you were referred to by Home Depot. You know, it's just, uh, it just it definitely helps, definite definitely. So Philip Davis, yes, <clears throat> yep, that's the that's the code. Um, Carl, how you doing? You share valuable and useful information, usable information. I try to, I try to, you know, just uh. You know, if it's no good, then you know what are we what are we doing? So we we all need to, you know, share that kind of information. I can play Madden and not make money. <laughs> you could, you could switch camp. 
do you have to pay two different insurances for handyman and appliance repair? Cause I'm trying to do both and I want to know, can you get one for both? Thanks. Well, it depends. I mean, if your if your insurance company will let you cover appliances under your handyman business, which you just have to call your insurance. My insurance company is like a la carte, man. They they I'm like, yeah, I want to cover tile, I want to cover carpentry, I want to cover you know appliances, and they like all right, and I get a I'll get a um and it's, it's I basically it's almost like a contractor, and I just pick out a flooring, all the things I want to cover under my insurance and they send me out a, a, a what's it called? It's like a, it's not a pamphlet, but it's, it's my whole, it, my, my, they send me out my policy and it has all the things and it lists everything. And that's pretty much what I, what I do. So all the things that I do fall under just one policy. Um, I'm not sure if every company works that way. I, I actually use uh Liberty mutual. I really don't hear about too many people that use Liberty mutual. Um, but my, my insurance company is, Liberty Mutual uh, Business Insurance. So I also got my uh, my my vehicle, my auto covered under them too. So um, Pittsburgh, Toddy, what's going on? Fixed the garage door today that kept opening. First time messing with one. Yeah, I've worked on garage doors a little bit, mostly during the springs. I haven't really, I haven't really done an install, but I mean, um. And one reason is because I got a garage door guy, you know, he's the, the, the time is going to take, even with the Springs, I'll do this, the garage door Springs, but he has them in stock. I don't, you know, he, you know, the, for me to get them, it's going to take a day or two for him. I can just call him right out. His prices are great. So, um, but yeah, there's, there's money in garage doors though. Oh, oh, the Springs, the Springs, if you do them, they're very, they're pretty simple to repair to change. And, but I mean, you can get a few hundred dollars, man, and you could change the spring out in half an hour, you know, you know, 45 minutes, whatever. But I'm just saying it's, it's a, it's a good trade off. All right. The next one we want to talk about is, well, we might as well go into thumbtack thumbtack. Uh, now I'll, the only thing I'll say when I got on thumbtack, the leads were low. Like, I mean, you could get on Thumbtack and get a lead for seven bucks. And you had to sign up for nothing. You just went through the list, okay, um, had your information up there under this certain uh, category, and that was it. And then, you know, they 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 could send you leads. I've never really done – I've not, never really done a whole bunch of them on there, but all the ones I did was mostly appliance installs. On, on thumbtack too um for some reason i didn't like the doing the handyman leads because they were like i said they were so they were all over the place and i was already doing all the home advisor stuff and it was just like you know sometimes you get too many leads that don't fit what you do and it's just it just gets too cumbersome trying to trying to uh, balance all of it so i didn't really do many of the handyman leads on there but uh, mostly appliance installs and and yeah like i said uh I had no problem with thumbtack. <laughs> um, yeah, none that I could think of. I had, you know, I couldn't figure out for, you know, when I got on, when I originally got on there, they used to have you put the money that you, uh, like how much you, your rate. And they had you put it up there and I just, I was trying to change my rate and they wouldn't let me change it for, for whatever reason. So I think it's still there, but what they don't show me anyways, because now of course they changed thumbtack to where, it's more on the home advisor thing where you kind of get, you got to pay up front. Well, you don't know. I'm sorry. You're not paying up front. You're, you're setting a budget. So it's, it's uh, similar to like, um, I don't know, maybe you're running Facebook ads or something like that, but you're, you're setting a budget for how many leads you want to get. And so if your budget is, I don't know, $50 a week, then that's what will max you out as $50 a week. But when they send you a lead, it's automatically deducted, just like HomeAdvisor is now. But if you're, you know, like I said, if if you know how to play it and you, you got it into your, 
your your whole marketing is is part of your marketing plan. You know, you're paying for leads one way or another, right? You're paying for lead generation. You're paying for your website. You're paying for all this. So, if there's some way you could fit it in and work it into your system, I mean, Home Advisor is not bad. It's not it's not bad at all. Home Advisor. I mean, I'm sorry, I said Home Advisor. Thumbtack. Um, it's probably out of the ones that that you know where where you have to pay per lead, it's still probably one of the better ones. You could also shut it down as long as you like, I think as long as you want. Well, I, you got you definitely could shut it down as long as you want because mine's been shut down for <laughs> I don't even remember the last time I, I did a did a lead on thumbtack, took a lead on thumbtack. So yeah, you can you can uh get that out of here. Um I'm trying to think of anything else with thumbtack that I'm that I'm forgetting. Um, they have a new thing now. I don't know if they require it, but they started having you do scheduled, like basically having this uh, a, where customers automatic scheduling, where customers could go in and pick a time and just book automatic booking. That's what it's called, automatic booking. And that doesn't. That's another thing that doesn't really work with my business because you know if I'm if I'm working on somebody's kitchen, I don't know. You know I can't just schedule a job for two p.m. And just what I'm, I'm just going to leave the job. And just that's when the little jobs and the, and the medium sized jobs and the bigger jobs, they just started not really balancing out, especially if I could do them. I just can't have the customer schedule. Them. So, you know, um, Kenny Monsters, what's going on? Been doing commercial maintenance for over 20 years, set up my LLC and the whole nine just this past month. Just starting out and no idea where to get my first customer. This video time is impeccable. Hey, I appreciate it. Like I said, it's it's gonna be on replay forever, man. So, you know, do what you do what you will. Whatever information you need, it's gonna be there. Um, so we went over Angie, Home Depot, and Thumbtack. And like I said, um, Thumbtack offers where you can get, um, well, basically they'll they'll put your profile up if you if you pay the money, <laughs> if you if you pay like the whatever whatever it is. And have you, I think they say you turn on your lead preferences, but it's basically paying them to put your profile up so the cu- the customers can actually see you so they can pick you. Um, Home Depot, like I said, that's just as long as you stay in good standing. Ne- but now they did come out with something that says you have to be, to be a, a, a some kind of higher level pro when you have to have your, acceptance rate is like 80% or something like that, 80 or 90%. Um, Kenny said, Thumbtack wants a $200 retainer up front. You only pay for the leads you schedule and complete. Yeah. Yeah, but that's the problem. They you know, we pay for the leads you schedule, but then when they have automatic booking and you know, people just schedule the lead, I mean, as long you know, as long as the people are scheduled and are getting the work done, that's fine, I guess. But um, I know, you know, I had a couple of times where a customer contacted me because a customer can <clears throat> a customer on Thumbtack can pick up to like three. They can they have a limit, but I think they can pick up to like five contractors or something like that that they can uh, send a message out to, or they could just pick one and Thumbtack will let you know if they. That customer just picked you and they want to basically you do your job. That's almost a guarantee to, to get that one. But so I'm hoping with that 200 retainer up front, <coughs> excuse me, that they uh that they will won't charge you anything. Yeah, I'm hoping I'm hoping they won't charge you anything um, or make it difficult because, like I said, a lot of times if they do, if you do have to pay, if you did have to pay for a lead, I've I've heard now I've heard Thumbtack was good at get at with the refunds. Unlike said Home Advisor, where like you get, I would get like 15 leads and half of them be trash, but I might need to get a refund on a couple of them, and they'd be like, "Oh, well, you already had like it's like you had two. <laughs> it's like but I didn't give I didn't do the leads. It was on, you know, it was y'all leads. <clears throat> but yeah, so hopefully they, they do that. Uh, but the retainer up front, $200. I'm telling you, 
some of these other companies are, are way worse. They want hundreds of dollars and they want to lock you in a contract. And then if you don't, if you want to cancel early, there's a cancellation fee. I know people had to pay a thousand dollars to get off a of home advisor or Angie. So two hundred dollars is not bad in the grand scheme of things. But like I said, if you uh, and they got it, they but also look at home advisor. Just I mean, I'm sorry, Home Depot, just because it takes a little longer to get on. Um, but you're not putting money out. Now, like like I said, they require a background check. Um, and of course your business license and everything else, they check everything to make sure you're legit. All right, let me see. Um, those are the main, those are the main big ones as far as you know, uh lead generation companies. I mean, there are a ton of them out there. Um, you know, uh, porch.com, they used to be bigger because they had to deal with Home Depot. I mean, what I'm sorry, they had to deal with Lowe's. So I don't I don't think they have the same relationship anymore. I think some people in some areas Lowe's is dealing with Angie, like it, with Angie uh services now. But porch.com got big because they had to deal with Lowe's. And I'm still on porch.com, man. And I still get leads to I just haven't canceled the, the account, but I still get the leads. And the way they work is I mean, there's no obligations to anything. You don't pay any money, you just signed up, they send the lead, you look at it if you want it, you pay for it. You know, and most of the leads I've seen are anywhere between twelve and twenty dollars. So <clears throat> signing up for it, there's no nothing out of your, you know, no no money coming out of your pocket. And I have done jobs from 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 them. All the leads haven't been great, and they give but they give you a time limit because uh, for if you want a refund, <laughs> you got to call within uh, that same day. Right, you got to call. I think message that same day, and then also have a follow up call and a message the next day. Uh, through it all, it has to be done through the app, so they can make sure that you know that you did it. So if you didn't get any response or anything, then they'll they'll issue you a refund. Um, of course, ta there's Task Rabbit, and like I said, Task Rabbit is a bunch of little little jobs, um, or or people wanting you to do things. Help them move stuff, move furniture around, just just whatever, whatever people come up with, um, and it doesn't pay that much, uh, and it's all done through Tash Rabbit, so it's one of those things where they pay you as well. You know, I, I think it has its place. You know, there's there's a lot of guys like if I was in college and I had the option to do uh, Tash Rabbit versus go work at McDonald's, I mean, come on. You know what I mean? So this is part of why I say I don't just throw these things out the window. I'd be a Tash Rabbit all day uh, if I can get a little job for 75 bucks and it takes me an hour. Much better. I'd be at McDonald's all day trying to get that and be greasy. Who, I mean, who wants that? So Tash Rabbit is all right. And then you got Yelp. I actually did Yelp when I first started. And in my area, <laughs> But I, I'll say this, my first job, the first job I ever got was off of Yelp. Even though I signed up for Yelp, I was on there for about, and they, it's this something, I don't know, it's like pay per click or something. But it's me, I don't like it. I, I couldn't see the leads. I don't know when people are clicking. All I knew was like after three days, I, I, my, I had owed like $85 and I was like, okay, never mind. But then, like, I was still on Yelp, and like a week later, some lady called me with the one of the worst jobs ever. But I did it because it was my first, and it was my first job. You know what I mean? It was, <laughs> it was a lady that wanted. It was a ceiling in a bedroom upstairs. The drywall guy said he was going to charge her like thirty five hundred to put up drywall, <clears throat> and so she wanted to see if I could put up um, paneling. And I didn't know you look. As I said, we, this is years ago. You want paneling on your ceiling? Whatever, man. It ain't my house. I don't. I really don't care. So I put paneling up on her ceiling, and she was happy. And it was. It was. I don't know. It was a weird job, man. But <clears throat> but yeah, Yelp in my area didn't work. But also, uh, you know, that's another thing. Certain certain apps are more popular depending on the area that you're in. 
So, I mean, it's kind of like you just got to look at it and figure out which one works best for you. You know, um, look, search in Google, you know, uh, and, and, you know, see what comes up, you know, try, uh, look for, I don't know, look for a handyman in your area and, and see what comes up online. You know, so it's just, there's just different ways you can try, you can try to find out, but that's probably, you know, Yelp, Yelp is definitely one of those where it just depends on where you live. So in my area, no, I mean, this is nobody really uses it. Um, <clears throat> ones that I wouldn't consider uh, lead generation, though, I would consider more of them like where where you could market, you can get leads, but they're not going to just generate leads and uh, just because like they'll just, a, you know, like next door. Next door is one of those apps where I I said it before where I, I I was on next door. I'm on next door. I get on there sometimes and just, you know, just peruse, you know what I mean? Just look around a little bit, see what's there. And there's always somebody complaining about a contractor. There's always somebody looking for somebody. But I read through, man, and it's just like it just seems like there's a lot of people who do just who are trying to find the cheapest guy. So I, I, and then my interactions with people have proved me right <laughs> on a couple of times that I did see a customer on there, and I went in there and said, you know, I could help you, I could help you, you know, um, now you know, what, what can we do? And then we talk, and then the, what they want, they want somebody who's going to do it for like fifty bucks or whatever. I'm like, well, that, that's somebody you got to be related to or something, or you're just earning them up the street. That ain't, you know, you, an actual business. Charging fifty dollars for anything is, is, is crazy. So, uh, Kenny allegedly, Kenny Monster said is allegedly is two hundred dollars one time. Then once that's spent, you have to pay for individual leads from that, that point on. Okay, well, yeah, it'll be that, that's what I'm saying. They they want you to set up with two hundred dollars, and it's probably just so you can actually use the system. See if you like it. They'll and see how much the leads are because they, you know, they didn't. I'm there. I'm pretty sure they're not telling you up front how much all the leads cost. Like I said, they used to cost like seven dollars. If you're signed up, they are still cheaper. They might be like fifteen to twenty dollars. I know if you're like me, and you're just, you know, uh, <laughs> just one of the people on the outside looking in, just watching the leads. I just, I just from time to time, I just went today. I knew I was gonna have this topic, so I just went on there today and just to look and um. They'll have leads that if nobody responds to the leads, um, then they'll discount it like 15%. So somebody like me who's just on there, then I could get on there and send something to a customer, but it'll still cost me like $25. I'm not, I'm not doing that. Um, Pittsburgh, Toddy, how do you charge for furniture assembly like Ikea, et cetera? A lot of times for me, when I was when I was doing furniture assembly, I usually just charge by the piece. I would have them. I would always have them send me either the serial number or take a picture of it so I can go look it up and try to see how complex it was. Because <laughs> so, somebody got me early, early on when I was like, um, they had a bunch of desks that they want to put together. It was like two rooms. And I was like, uh, they was like, I was like, so is it like a big furniture? Is it like regular desk? He's like, that's just a regular, regular desk for, uh, you know, okay. Man, I went there. It was like executive furniture. Like it was the biggest desk, heavy wood. Like, come on, man. So you got to know up front what kind of, what it's going to be. And those I used to look at by the hour. Um. <clears throat> I used to look at those by the hour where, you know, at one time I think I was doing like $75 an hour. So if I a dresser, if I thought it was going to take me, even if I did it faster, I would just say, okay, this is, this is going to be $150 for this, for this dresser. Or, you know, if it's something small, I might do it for a hundred bucks or, you know, there's rare. I, but it would just, it just all depends on the complexity of it. Um, you know, but if it's a bunch of things like, man, come on, I have people that that you hit me up and said they got a set of chairs for like their 
like a table or something. And like you're literally going in and you're screwing on four legs on the chairs, and that's it. Even then, like I, you know, I can't you can't charge too little. So I might be like in my mind, like, man, I don't want to kill them. And it might be good customers of mine. So I would charge them, I might charge them uh, you know, I don't know, forty-five dollars a chair just because I'm just got to charge something but i mean dude i could be out of here in 15 minutes so i don't know it's 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 tough but i always would ask them to send me the information on furniture send me pictures send me something so i can look it up and see what i'm getting myself into you know so if it's gonna be something if it looks complex oh i'll charge a couple a few hundred dollars you know for for a dresser or uh, entertainment. I, some people, I had a time where it was a lady, I think I charged her, it was 350 or 400 She got this entertainment center. It was like all the instructions were in like from like, uh, were in Spanish or something. Didn't come with anything. Anyways, you know, people now just be buying stuff online. And all the measurements were in, you know, the millimeters and centimeters and all that. So, and, and it was wall mounted. This thing was gigantic and it had to be wall mounted. It ended up taking me, I ended up having to get one of my daughters to come with me and it took us three, it was like four, like four hours. I even had to send her to the store because it wasn't designed for like, uh, 16 on center studs. So I had to send her to the store to get some fern strips so we could sit behind there so we can get this thing where we needed it to go. It was ridiculous. So yeah, yeah, always get that information up front about what what kind of uh, furniture it is. Um, <clears throat> yep. So next door, you got Craigslist. Um, I've never used it. I know now. Um, For you to go on there and advertise your services, it's like five bucks, um, you know. But I've never actually used Craigslist myself um, to, you know, for the jobs. But I've heard some people uh, get them. But I've also, you know, heard the leads were, or not leads, but the customers you might find on there are a little shaky, you know. Um, let me see, Jeremy Fish, what's going on, man? Off topic, but just purchased the Sentech hose from the older video of yours. Jeweling on, on that vac. What is your con on that? On the vacuum? Um, I haven't had an issue with it. It's the, uh, yeah, I can't, I haven't had an issue with it. Now, the one I bought was, of course, the one that has. The, uh, the motor on the bottom is the bottom mounted motor set instead of the normal ones that are mounted on the top. And I got that <laughs> literally because, you know, I go out to the saw and I was, you know, when I bought it, I was doing a whole lot of crown molding and things of that nature. And I like to just be able to just, um, just to, you know, I get my crown up. I just kick the, you know, I just kick it. I don't have to go touch it, man. I just, so that's really why I bought that one. And of course it has the bar where you can wheel it around and, and uh, roll it roll it to, into the jobs or whatever. Um, but man, that Sentech hose, I'm telling you, the, the attachment for those, I'm trying to think of anything I've ran into yet that it doesn't work on. Like I, I had a, the Festool sander uh, back here on the shelf. It has an attachment that fits perfectly onto that Festool sander. It goes on to, has an attachment for, like I said, my miter saw that works perfect. I got a Makita uh, miter saw. Um, what else? I have a DA sander that it works. I mean, perfectly. The the attachments. I don't. I can't think of anything that I've I have that has uh, hasn't attached to it. Though one of those attachments hasn't worked. So, and like I said, it's pliable. Oh my! Like I said, my my drywall sander. It, it has attachment that works that perfectly, and it's so pliable, like that. You know, moving around that. It doesn't pull out of the, you know, whatever it's hooked on to. I never, I've never had an issue with it just, just pulling out of the, of the machine or whatever. So, yeah, that that Sentech hose, man, they need to, they need to send me a check, okay. But 
I didn't promote them so much, man, but it's I, I can't help it. I can't help it. It's a great host. So you know, um thanks gonna pull the trigger on that then. Don't like those top motors, gets dust and dirt all over everything when you open it up. It's empty it. And you know what's what's crazy is that I got the, you know, like I said, when I'm doing most things, I have the HEPA setup, the HEPA filter, the HEPA bags, and I I've had to had to change the filter yet. I I can't say it's just this thing is so great or these bags are so great. But I didn't I didn't uh use it on so much drywall, like drywall sand and using my sander and like where I've skim coated whole ceilings, man, and I've had to use this thing for to 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 sand. And the the filter has been clean. Still haven't had to clean the filter, and it's just so I don't know. I don't know if the bags might be just so great that nothing gets on a filter, but yeah, yeah. I, I, I said I'm, I'm that that thing stays with me, stays in the trailer. Uh, Pittsburgh Tiny have three crescent wrenches, one made in USA, one Chinese, one Japan. It's a Japanese one is far superior. I mean, you know, I'm a, like I said, I'm a, I'm a Makita guy. Um, and I, I love the, everything about all the tools that I have. I mean, they are the truth. It just say like for tile, you know, you need to mix up thin set, man, the little hammer drill, you know, you get the set of a, of a driver and a drill and you get that little, the, the hammer drill. It's, it's same size as the regular drill, but it's a hammer drill. I think the set is like three fifty or 400, something like that. Um, that drill will mix up a full bucket of thin set with no problem. No problem. I don't have to, I have old hammer drills where, you know, the big ones and they all, I don't have to do that. I don't have to do that. I use a little, I use a little Makita uh, drill and it's, it's perfectly fine. Or perfectly able to handle uh, that kind of load. Like I said, y'all, you know, thin set, Depending on how you're mixing it, man, that stuff ain't, you know, it's 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 heavy. So, and I've never had a problem. Never broke one, nothing. It's just they are workhorses. Work horses. Compared to when I first started, <laughs> I didn't know it was that much of a difference. Cause you know, I had tools that were just homeowners' tools, right? So I had um what's the name? Like cobalt, like cobalt dri driver. Or <laughs> And I was drilling into it was an old farmhouse. They were I was we were converting some rooms into just like livable, livable rooms. And that it was the old wood. That wood was serious. Where I don't know how many drill uh uh drills I broke off, drill bits that broke off in the wood. It was just like, okay, this stuff is like metal, it's worse than metal, it's crazy. And I remember I had my drill, man, and then something just popped on the inside of it, and I was like. Okay, I guess this this homeowner this homeowner stuff it ain't it ain't gonna survive this everyday work. So yeah, I had to end up going out, and I always just wanted the Makita. I'm not sure why, but even my first I got a, a Hitachi before they uh, uh, changed their name. I got a Hitachi uh, like a 12 inch miter saw was my first big miter saw. So I don't know, there's something there, something, there's something there, man. Craig Strand, hey Daryl, I'll be retiring in a couple years and jumping in as a handyman. What would you say there are five mistakes to avoid as a beginner? Five mistakes to avoid. Uh, I guess I'd say one from the start is is undercharging. Undercharging. I did a video just about how to charge as a handyman. Um. The whole the whole point of the video it, it doesn't give I don't I can't give you specifics on what to charge for this job and that job the whole point of the video was just how not to undercharge maybe I should have named it that because it's really just saying okay how do you take all the money that you want to make and be able to figure out even the least amount so that you know when you go to this job that you're not just um you know you're not just just throwing numbers out. So that probably be the first thing I would uh, try to figure out is how much do I need to charge, even if I'm um even if I'm gonna hook somebody up, 
um, you know, and do something for cheaper, you still need to make enough money. So I would say that I would say know what jobs you want to do and know what you don't and don't let any customers talk you into doing jobs that you don't want to do. <laughs> that is the absolute like if you don't do it and you don't want to do it, you just don't do it. You retire. You don't have to do it. You don't have to do everything. And I've caught myself on the bad end of that sometimes uh, where somebody would, it's something I can do, but it might be something that I hate doing. Just absolutely hate doing. And I, I might even told myself before, I'm no longer, I'm not doing these jobs anymore. And I just did it anyway. And a lot of times I regretted that. So just make sure that, you know, you take the job that you want to do. Don't take the ones that you don't want to do. Um, the same thing, just because you retired, you could you could go crazy on tools. So it's almost like you know, it's just in, and it's kind of in the same vein. You want to know the scope of the jobs that you do because you could end up buying enough tools to just build a house. I mean, I probably I know I know I don't you know probably I have enough tools where I could just build, I could build a house from scratch. <laughs> Maybe not to pour the concrete, but man, or or you know the the footings and all that. But I got everything you possibly, and I just don't you know i just don't need it i don't need it so don't don't spend don't spend your money on things that you don't need it just it just takes you longer to get what you need take time off one of the jobs that i don't do much anymore i do i do it but i i don't do drywall installs often because i'm not retired i ain't nowhere near retired you know i am i'm i'll be 45 this year right I um I don't know. I just you just gotta be realistic on how old you are. <laughs> so the older you wanna uh I see videos of guys, man, that are younger guys that are you know picking up four sheets of drywall and carrying them upstairs by themselves. I'm like, brother, you gonna you're gonna regret that. Ain't no way. I got all the little gimmicks and gadgets that'll help me to save my back to save my knees, everything. Like, so make sure you got all those little, even that little, you know, the little, I wish I had one in here. I don't, but I never thought I would get one, but there's a little a tool that'll, it's like a, it's orange. It's the, it's the thing that hooks under like a, a sheet of plywood or a sheet of drywall or something that helps you carry the sheet without having to put your, you know, get an awkward position or have to hold the sheet over top of your head or something like that. It, it, it actually works. It actually works. I just did a uh, when I when I did I just did a video where I did a trailer. No, I did a shed, and I had I don't know twelve sheets of uh, a T one eleven, and uh, one by one I just used that little hook thing. And man, like I said, that'll save you back. I'm trying to think, is there any other any other mistakes? That was that three. I don't know. I think of some man. I think of uh, something else. Um, how Jeremy said, spent my first year's profit on tool on just tools. That's a big one. Oh man, man, I'm telling you, oh, the tools. When I, I if I when I go in my garage, because <laughs> half of them, you know, that's the thing. You spend them, man. I have I'll have one job, and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep doing this, and then I never do it again. And I and I knew it before I took, and I was just buying these. Like you gotta have, well, if you gonna buy the tool, then you might as well buy the the best one. And then it just, I don't know. Can you share your worst table saw kickback story? You know, I don't really have any bad stories from, uh, when I was a from well from when I was a contractor. I'm surprised I got figures, man, from when I wasn't a contractor. But when I first, man. I bought a table saw and I bought, it was like the cobalt, you know, I was a cobalt dude. I was just doing hardwoods at the house and I didn't know, I didn't know anything about the kickback. <laughs> and I took the, uh, I had a, a piece of hardwood. I'm kind of, I'm kind of uh, strip it down and it gets caught, you know, cause the cobalt uh, fence doesn't automatically line up with the saw. So at least it didn't uh, when I bought it. 
Um, so you had to just put it on there and try to line the back and the front up with the saw as best as you could. And if you got it, you got it. You know, if you didn't, so I think it would just be off a little bit and it get caught. And man, I had to think, and then it just released. And man, that the whole piece of wood that hit me right in the stomach, man. It hit me right in the stomach, man. I was like, man, I, I mean, I, I was feeling that for days. But that's when I first, I didn't expect it to shoot back at me. You know what I mean? When it when it did that, I was like, oh, what's, what's going on? But that's when I learned about the kickback on the table saw. Because I, I had never used one, man. I just bought one and just, ah, you just run the wood through it. Nah, nah. So now I'm 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 super cautious, man. When I when I use the table table saw, um, and even when I have a long piece of wood to put through there, I start putting it through, and then I have something on the other side. Then I'm always pulling it, and I make sure I hold it together so that because I, I I've had that where like the the piece that's on the inside, if it's the piece you're cutting off, that thing will shoot shoot out across the room somewhere, man, break something. So, but yeah, yeah, I just had one shoot back, hit me in the stomach. And uh, you know, caused me to just ruin my night. Um, so that maybe that's another one. Don't um, you know, be careful on them tools. <laughs> be careful on them tools. I will say liability wise, though. Um, I don't I, I really start to look a lot at liability when I take a job versus just what I'm doing. Um, so and it also matters because a lot of times when you when you look at from a liability standpoint, I got a little short video I'll be putting out soon, just putting up some uh some safety bars. And I know some people think ah safety bars just like putting up a towel bar. I, I mean, kind of only thing is towel bars aren't supposed to hold up people, right? You know what I mean? Especially people on a wet floor. Like that's not what towel bars are for. If you do the safety bars wrong, you could be getting some lawsuit if somebody slips and falls and that whole thing snatches out the wall. You could have some serious problems on your hands. So I look at that when I do safety bars, I charge a premium for them because they're not towel bars. And, you know, I got to make sure these things are super secure. So it's stuff like that where there was a time I wouldn't even do them. I wouldn't even do a safety bar, especially if it was in a um, fiberglass shower. I just didn't trust it. I didn't trust it. Plus, I'm like, I got <laughs> I got one shot. You cut this hole in the wrong place. Then what? Then what? You got one one shot, man. So I'm like, nah, nah, never really um never really messed with it. Um oh let me um another one of these uh, uh back on the business thing though. The Google My Business. I know that's the that's what everybody's always talking about. That is like I said. It's a different kind of lead generation, of course. So it's not like, um, you know, people just get to automatically, you, you're going to pay and you get a guaranteed amount of calls and whatever. Not like that. But, of course, what's, what it's good for, you set up your profile, you get yourself situated, um, and you could come up on maps and, you know, people could find you in the search. So you could tie your website to it. Um, what I like that they do is that when I know when customers call me or if I miss calls, they'll get, they give me a report of like how many calls that I either missed or I, you know, that I got on there. And I, so I think it's a, it's got a lot of good features. I don't like how to do your pictures, man. You know what I mean? You upload your pictures to your Google, my business, and they just throw them wherever they want. I don't know. It's been so long since I added the picture, man. Maybe they changed, maybe they fixed that. But I'm like, you can't, I want the picture going, you know, in order the way I put them in here. And then now, nah, now, nah, nah, they just, they say, no, no, this is free. We're just going to do what we want with these pictures. One thing, one thing I've heard though, you want to help with your SEO is that when you take pictures, there was an area I used to like to work in that's a little out of my range. But, you know, there's a lot of people who had some money. They had, they had money there. So I was, I liked working down there. So I'd always take pictures and upload those pictures directly to Google from my phone. And, you know, what they say is that, the you know, your, your phone has the area, I guess, embedded in it, the location. And it would, it would help you come up in those areas because Google can recognize from those pictures that you worked in that area. 
So when somebody in that area searched, then I, I would come up, even though it was, you know, 45 minutes away. So, and then I've been getting, I don't know if anybody else has been getting calls. I've been getting calls. I mean, a ton of calls from e-local. I guess they're trying to get into the handyman business or, but I, I've never used their service. I didn't even know e-local was a big, big thing, but man, they are really going hard. But I get calls from them. It seems like at least once a day, at least once a day. Um, I still get calls from Angie like once a day, man. It's crazy. I'm like, man, they don't pick up on the hits. I'm like, man, how many times I got to trash you guys to stop, you stop calling me? It's crazy. But um, yeah, e-local, man. I'm not sure if anybody's ever used them, but I've been getting calls from them like crazy. But yeah, as far as uh, you know, starting out getting business, these are really the things you're gonna look at. Now, it's not the only things, of course. The Google My Business, and you're trying to get your website. But besides Angie, I don't, I don't recommend Angie. But I know, man, I only know one guy. I said I know one guy. He uses Home Advisor, but he's like, he does pressure washing. He's like etched, etched in. You know, he's locked in. He gets so much work. He's just like, man, he has a profile online. He has his, uh, the home advisor. I guess he has his tapped in how many, how many, how much it costs him. And he probably, get, he must get a good percentage of the leads. That they must be good leads. So if they're for him, for uh, directly for pressure washing, handyman leads are insane because you'll get somebody that I've had so many people in the handyman leads that want, you know how to fix upholstery? No, no, I, I can't. You can't. I can't sew your hole in your couch, man. I can't do it. I can't do it. All right, Ray. Hey, you have a good one, man. You have a good one. You know, I'm always, you know, of course, Ray. Y'all, I don't know. Y'all know Ray, man. You, we, everybody knows each other. Ray, Ray, the bulletproof, bulletproof handyman, is in the building. So you know, I love, I love Ray's content. He does the, which I don't really talk about. He does the. uh property managers which if you're getting started and you're fir first starting out that's a that's a good way to go too uh you know i mean and a lot of times you can get in that way and stick stick with it with uh property managers but that's a way that you can get work if you can get a property manager you'll get work <laughs> you'll get you'll you'll definitely get work you know so and uh Watch the, like I said, Bulletproof Handyman, man. He, he got a lot of stuff on property management and dealing with that and getting the property management, uh, a business started that focuses on property managers, man. He's he's that he's that dude. You know what I mean? Um, Handyman Mark, what's going on, man? Um, Pittsburgh, uh, working in a shop as a teenager, I was ripping eight-foot solid oak boards and they kicked back so hard it flew across the shop. It went completely through a wall. Oh goodness! It stuck the other side of my boss's office. Man, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, no, nah, I never had nothing like that. But I'm I'm glad I was. I when well, when I was using that piece of hardwood. Luckily, I was so like so ridiculous. I mean, I'm standing right up on the saw. Like it was just ridiculous. So when it shot back. Like I said, hit me straight in the stomach because I'm I'm not I'm not moving I'm not out of the way. But so it didn't. I don't think it got the chance to get that much momentum. But with something like that shooting through a wall, man. Yeah, man. I, you know I've heard that. Yeah, them things put people in the hospital. Man, that's crazy. But yeah. So as far as that goes, like I said, that's that's the lead generation as a whole from. My perspective, is there any companies uh, like <clears throat> earlier, um, the Matt and Kim Harris left a comment and said they, they love Thumbtack. Or he, lo he, he loves using Thumbtack. Now, I would say if you can, if you start it, it doesn't cost a lot to uh, figure it out, to, to use it and, and try and see if you like it. That's the biggest thing for me is that you should have some money up front to try some things to see if they work, but it shouldn't, you know, push you out of business right from the start or take thousands of dollars out of your pocket. So thumbtack is like that. 
porch is good. I just don't know. Uh, I didn't like the last time I took a lead from porch because they're starting to advertise in a way where they're not advertising as porch. I didn't like that. They're advertising as like, I think one of the things they fall under, you, somebody looks search for drywall. You do a drywall search on Google and it'll be like, Oh, all-star drywall pros. And then somebody clicks on it and it, basically has them fill something out. And what happened is the last time I did it is I got a message from porch with a lead. And then when I called the guy, he was like, you know, he never went to porch.com. He never, um, what he, he never went to porch.com. He doesn't know. Like he act like I was some kind of scam. I was a scam artist. <laughs> I was like, I was like, well, look, let me tell you something. I'm telling you exactly what I did. I've never heard of All Star Drywall. If you look it up in Google, you won't find. There's no company around here called All Star Drywall. So I didn't like that, making me look like I was a scam artist calling the customer because they had, uh, I don't know, they had something shady going on. Um, I took a kick back to the chest. Oof, bruised so bad it turned green. Yeah, yeah. I mean that that kickback is, is like I said, it's it's no joke. I felt I felt it for days in the abs. Well, I love all that handyman business. YouTubers I watch know are in dialogue with each other. I really benefit getting a variety of perspectives. Absolutely, and I think you should. I I, I you know I don't have I've done certain things, but. Like say me, I've I've worked with property managers. I still have a property manager that I work with from time to time. But like somebody like uh Bulletproof or, or Ray, he he works with that's what he does. He won't even take a, a private customer. He's like property managers, that's it all day. And he doesn't like doing it my way. I work directly with the public, directly with customers, get my own customers, um, you know, the whole nine. How I work with getting deposits and it's just, you know, I have my system work down to a science and um, that's just the way I like doing it because the projects that I like to do, I'm only really going to do them with direct customers. So that's the way I like to do it. Um, let me see. I do see you haven't talked about Facebook and Nextdoor. I, I I talked a little bit. I tell you, I did talk a little bit about Nextdoor where you can get your name out. And if you can get uh, in the right with the right customers on next door, then they'll they will pass your name around. Um, my experience just has been that the, it, may, it could have just be the customers I've dealt with have been looking for a very cheap experience, <laughs> and uh, I just you know I just there's nothing I can do for them. You know I've tried. I don't think I've. And I even felt bad because there, there were customers that had bad experiences with contractors or handymen, and they were talking about it in the con. And then, so I was in the comments, and I'm like, "Hey, you know what? Reach out to me. Here's my information. I can work with you." And then they might reach out, and then they want something done for some ridiculous price, and I'm like, well, "Who was the contractor you had? You know, or or somebody that wants me to do something like for half price because the other contractor took all their money." It's like, well, I can't do that. I mean, I'm supposed to go out of business because the other contractor did something. Nah, nah. So, but next door, you could buy ads. You could buy ads on there. Um, I'm not sure how effective they are, though. You know, uh, you know how, how often the people are looking at the ads on next door. You know, whenever I see somebody post like the cleaning business or something, it doesn't seem to get any traction. I see more um, when somebody else recommends somebody on there that seems to get a lot of likes and stuff or, or like I said, if you go under somebody else's post and then, you know, tell them, Hey, reach out to me and here's my information. Then that seems like it, it, it does something. So a uh, Facebook, I've gotten work off of, off of Facebook. I used to advertise. I used to just, Facebook was so cheap to advertise that I used to just keep a running advertisement on there. And what the thing I like about Facebook, Facebook is the closest thing you're going to be able to get to the feds. <laughs> so Facebook got all your information. So if you ever advertised on Facebook, the first time I did it, I was shocked. I knew Facebook had information, 
But man, when I, you know, you go in and you like, <laughs> they got all the information. They like, man, uh, do you want customers who, um, who, who, who like magazines about this and this? It's like, what magazines? How do you know what kind of magazines they like? They have all the information. Uh, customers who like to do this on the weekend, customers who, who do this and do this. And it's just, they got such detailed information. I get why advertisers, why they're worth so much advertisers are paying them so much because when you put pictures up, you know, they know everything that you like to do. They know your hobbies. They know what you look at. They know your friends. They know what your circle, you what your friends look at. And I could tailor my ads just to that and get that specific. So, Facebook is good for that. It's also good for, and you can also, you, when you po- pay for a post on Facebook, it also, um, you can put it on Instagram for free. It's like a package deal. Um, And they're pretty, they're pretty cheap. Like they give you a certain amount of views, like it's uh, impressions. And I mean, for, you know, 25, 30 bucks, man, you can get, you can run an ad for, I mean, I can't even think. It might be like that was less than five dollars. It's less than five dollars a day. But you be you can run an ad on there. You know, thirty bucks, forty dollars. I don't know what it is next. It's been a while since I ran an ad, but and it and be on there for a month. Now it might not reach that many people, and the more you pay for that thirty days, the more people that they'll the more impressions you'll get. So that's how, that's kind of how they do it. Um, you know, I I just kept an ad running. And and, and one thing, and like I said, it, because it was so cheap, then also you could pick the area where you want to advertise. So if I'm good, like I used to say with Facebook, I'm all right with where I live. I can, I can, I'm in with Google and with, you know, my referrals and everything's taking care of that. There's this other, these other couple places that are in areas that I really like to work in. I want Facebook just to advertise in those areas. So that's what I do. Um, pick you can pick the age group, everything. So Facebook is good. Um, as just to get your name, if it's nothing else, just to get your name out, man. You can just keep keep marketing, just just keep it on Facebook and just uh just keep paying and and putting ads on there. And it it, it will get your name out. Uh, SDS Construction, Steve, what's going on? Great to catch you live, brother Daryl. Good topic to cover for young, just starting out. Handyman, yes, yep, yeah, absolutely, man. Appreciate you, Steve. I always tell everybody, Steve, uh, he's my guy. He was Steve, he, he probably doesn't even uh know this, but Steve was probably one of the first people when I got on uh YouTube. I didn't hardly have any, you know, any subscribers, man. And, and um, but Steve, the same way he's here now. He was in the comments, like one of the first people ever commenting that I had dialogue with, and I probably had fifty subscribers or something like that. And Steve was already, you know, you know, pushing me to get out here. And so I always appreciate uh, people like that, man. So you know, Steve, and like I said, he's he's a guy that he has the he does all kinds of stuff, but he um, he does trailers. Not, not not that he does trailers, but he has a trailer that's like you know one of those super trailers. <laughs> one of those super trailers, man. I, you know, mine is nowhere near like he has all the drawers and all the different things going on. Like it's just, yeah, his trailer is the truth. So SDS construction, you got to check Steve out. Um, let me see. You see, not the same as those other services, but they do pr- uh, provide legit leads. Yeah. Yeah. They, like I said, you can get legit leads. Uh, like I said, I, ne- next door, there's some people who, it seems like the people on next door, who have the most success are the people whose names get passed around on next door, right? Not the people who advertise on next door. So if somebody says, Hey, you know, I, I got a great guy that I used. You, you can, it seems like you can, you can go crazy on next door, but the people who just advertise, I don't know if you're how far your advertisements will get you on there, but Facebook, the advertisers, you, I've gotten customers for Facebook. So, you know, um, I never, but I never turned it up. 
I just had to, I almost had like the bare minimum because I just wanted to just run an advertisement and just let it go. I didn't have to think about it. It didn't cost hardly nothing. Um, yeah. So, uh, handyman Mark, I work with both private and people are property managers. Both can be a pain. <laughs> oh, that's the truth. That's the truth. That, don't get it. Don't, don't get it twisted. What I'm saying, there, there's no way on earth. I will tell people that working with private customers is the greatest thing. It's just the greatest. It is the way I like to do it. And, but, and over time you start to get more customers that you're compatible with. But I just had one recently. I made a video about how I had to fire a customer just because it was, and he was referred. He was referred from a guy down the street and it was a street that, I mean, I spent one year, I spent half the year on this one street just from I had the, the main guy referred me to the people across the street and then the people next door to them. And I was working with everybody and it ended up that the, but one of those people, everybody was cool, but one guy and he was an absolute pain. He was a pain, man. Um, property managers, the, the, the issue for me with property managers it w- was just that with the way my job schedule is, it's just it just ends up being hard for me to get to some of the customers sometimes. So um, I have a couple of pro- like, no, not a couple. I got one property manager that I deal with and like two realtors that I deal with. And they call when they absolutely need something. It's almost like <laughs> I think I'm overpriced for what they want. So, but when they when they when they're back against the wall and they they know they can call me, they know to get the job done. I I actually work for a lot of people who own their own rentals, who manage their own rentals. I, I uh, have quite a few of those, or people that own Airbnbs. Uh, I actually deal with quite a few of those, but they're not they're just not ran through property management companies. Just people who. Are, are managing their own, their own stuff. So, but property management, like I said, it's, it's, if you get on, get on one and they like you and they, uh, they like your prices and all that, and you're reliable. Oh, they'll give you work. I've had ones that I hadn't talked to in years that every year they are still trying to get me to, to call me, trying to get me to send them my information so they can update my tax information that get me in the system with my insurance and everything. And, I just can't, but I can't do it. Uh, thanks, Daryl. Very kind words. Yeah, yeah, no, Steve, that was that's the truth. You know, sometimes uh, you know, you don't get to tell people certain certain things, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I I really appreciated that early. Cause you know, especially when you first start out, you don't know what you're doing, and you're thinking that um it is you know, nobody's really watching. But it's good to know that somebody enjoyed it or somebody got something out of it. You know, even if even if they didn't, even if they just lied to you. But no, I definitely appreciated that. Jeremy Fish, I got one customer for next door, a next door ad, and wasn't even in the area I was targeting. Really? Yeah, see, I that's I, I can't say I, I never ran an ad on next door. Ran plenty, plenty on Facebook. I ran them on Instagram. Um I'm signed up with I said, well, I talked about Google my business. I'm actually signed up for Google LSA, the, the local ad services. Um, but I haven't kicked it in. So I haven't had the need to turn it on like all the way. But I have to pass their background check, everything. I'm, I'm linked in, but I, I haven't I, I never pulled the trigger because I wanted the background check so you can get the to have the Google guaranteed badge. Um so all, all that straight, I just never did it. So that's another one you can do. That's another one you can do. But at this point, I get it's just referrals and 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 you know, if once you get it for a few years, I mean, who knows? If it's an area you, where you know a lot of people and uh, you know, hey, news might travel fast and depending on what you do. Um, but for me, it took me about I want to say like the third year where it was like legit. I got like most of my calls, most of my work was done with referrals. It's probably that year where I just was talking about where the guy, when I first met the guy on that street and I started doing all, all his neighbor's houses and everything. That's probably the first year where I started doing mostly just um, customers, 
mostly just referrals. And that, I mean, that even that, you just never know. You out there, I was only reason I even met the guy because I he had a terrible contract, they had a bad situation. Um, I did an estimate down the street that I and I knew I wasn't gonna get that. <laughs> and I, I was driving and he literally came out and stopped me in the road, just waved me, flagged me down. Saw the saw the sign on the side of my truck, talked to him for a minute. Man, I've been doing work for him ever since. I got a job right now. They just paid me a deposit for. I got to go uh, repair their deck steps. Or when I put new, uh, their deck steps are gone. So I got to put new uh, stringers in. But, yep. Yeah, so, yeah, you get you get to them uh, places. Let me see. Next door, uh, Pittsburgh, Toddy. Next door. Definitely has the customer who wants the cheapest auction. Yeah, that's, that's been my experience every time. Had a guy who was complaining about contractors, man. He had all kind of stuff. Went to his house. I mean, all these measurements and all these things he wanted. New bathroom. Like, it was just, I don't know, just such a waste. And at the time, my prices weren't even weren't even that much. And he just, just wanted everything cheaper, 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 cheaper. So. Carl, good. 100% of my business comes from word of mouth. I know lots of people who know lots of people. It's just me. I don't have a helper or a crew. My specialty is cabinetry. Well, that's another thing too, though. If you have a specialty and you get known for that, then like, like, like you do cabinetry. I have customers all the time that ask me, you know, about building cabinets and, and building um, whether it's a cabinets for the kitchen or you know just it might be a bookshelf or or you know that people do them entertainment centers now or a bench going under a window or the where you hang your coats up and all that the cubbies i got people ask me that stuff all the time and sometimes i do it sometimes like like we're doing doors i don't have a setup to really do um doors and get it really top notch so i just won't do them um but if i had a cabinet guy i by myself I could probably refer, you know, 10 jobs a year to them. So, I mean, if you know, like I said, you, you get known. Yeah, it doesn't take long, man. It just takes you don't go out of business when you in the first year. That's that's the that's the lesson. Don't put yourself in a position where you're going out of business in the first year. Because you stick around long enough, your name is going to get out there. I realized I, I had a local guy that owned a company that I did a job for. He'd been in business for, I don't know, 30 years, something like that. He was, everybody knew this guy in the area. It was funny as he found me on Google and he called me up cause he had a leak in his plaster ceiling. It was a house that he didn't even live in at the time. And I went and I even asked him, I'm sh I was like shocked because I'm like, there is this, the market is starving for people. This guy's been here 30 years, been a business owner, knows all these other business owners. He has like four locations or whatever his business. He didn't know who to call. Didn't know who to call to fix the hole in the ceiling. So when I'm like, when I'm like, people don't know, you know, they don't, and, and they don't know you. When I say, uh, when you first start out, nobody knows who you are. They don't. They don't. You just think there's something obscure uh, off the top of your head. If I wanted, um, I don't know. If I wanted somebody to come out and, and uh, what you call it? Let me see. Do do something in my. No, nah, no, nah, that's too easy. Okay, if I wanted somebody to come out and and. Put a pool in my backyard. Who would you call? Just like that. Just, just think. You don't know. You have no idea. You have not thought about it in forever. And the first name might come will be the biggest pool store in your area or something like that. Most of the time, people just don't know until they're looking for them. So they don't. They just don't know who you are. But as time goes on, then your name just starts getting out there, and then you don't have to. You just, you just don't have to look. You know, the percentage of the, of the people, I don't need all my old customers to call me every time. I need, hey, if, if a couple, a few of them call me, I, have a few, I literally have that. A few of them will call me every month. 
or they'll be like, ah, you know, have a friend that they, they referred. But it just takes time. See the trick, uh, like Doug. See the trick. The next door is register in your target city, not where you live. Then you have chat access to wealthy areas. Well, see, that's what I was doing with Facebook and and uh, Home Advisor. After I got to a point with Facebook and Home Advisor, where locally I was good, where I was getting found on Google, uh, with just with Google Maps, you know, with the search enough locally where I didn't have to worry about locally. So I turned off all the local stuff Then I would use Facebook and home advisor and just put those, like you said, in, in certain areas where I knew people had a little, a little more uh, income to work with. And it worked out great. Worked out great. Even though now it's funny because I'm, I'm doing a house now. And I said, I, I said, I was going to start doing this because I ride around in these areas and when people talk about, um, they don't, you know, there's no money out. I, maybe I, and I think I, I, I might have to start doing that. Where I'm, maybe put a, a video out, where I'm just riding through these this development, and there's a bunch of them, bunch of them. And in my area, they're building like crazy. These massive developments, massive houses, and I just can just go on street after street after street, and there's just it's all new construction these massive houses and it's like all you see i just want people to understand that all you see out there is con contractors you know people do what we do handyman contractors um and lawn guys so when i say people need to learn a skill and get some of this money you got to do it cuz the money is out there money's out there but yeah yeah, that's what I did. The same thing. I never thought about that with next door, uh, but seemed like a good idea. Definitely seems like a good idea. Carl, good. But since Hurricane Harvey, my service has expanded to sheetrock, flooring, tile, etc. Have no crew or helper. Well, you see, you you you're just like me. You're just like me. I I'm a I'm a one man army. I, that's why that's why I tell the customers, you know, I'm a, I'm a one man crew. I do it all. I also tell them, you know, I'm a big dude, so I gotta. <laughs> I gotta tell him, hey, hey, look, I don't, I don't move how I look. So you're looking at me like, you know, nah, but <coughs> I move, I move a lot, I move much faster than uh, than, than I look like I do. <laughs> but yeah, so you, you're like me, you're like me. I don't, I'm, I'm by myself. Every once in a while, I do a door or something like that where I get one of my daughters to help me. Um, I had one of my daughters that she, she, um, I mean, she was 13 at the time where she was good enough with like a LVP flooring that I could put her in a room and she could just go to work, go to work. I could go in another room, be doing something else, come back, check on her. She didn't like to cut it. She didn't like to get the jigsaw or whatever to use to cut the, um, cut it, but open areas and all that, man. Or, or with the cutter, with the flooring cutter, she could get to the edge of walls, but getting around corners and stuff, and she didn't like using the jigsaw. But yeah, 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 nah, man, I um, I'm with you. I don't, I don't have a crew or helper. I keep thinking about it. I might, I might, but I really want somebody younger. Um, you know, so this summer, this summer, I might. It's a toss up. I don't know if one of my one of my daughters might come work work with me. If not, <coughs> excuse me. Goodness. Um, if not, I might get somebody to work, but not because I need the help. It's more so because I just I don't know. I want somebody to learn this stuff, man. I would love I love some of these youngsters to be able to get out here and hit the ground running instead of being like I did. Uh, you know, struggling and having to learn, having to learn everything on my own. I love you, just you know, hey, hit the ground running, man. Get out here when you're young and don't go work at McDonald's and, and you know, flip a burger. Ain't no skill in that. Pittsburgh, Tidy, great show. Good night. Hey, 
You have a good one, man. I'm almost about to wrap it up. I try to start a little later because I'm because I'm on the East Coast, so I can you know uh, I know people all over on the on the West Coast could could check it out. Uh, so for me, it's it's, all, it's after nine. Um, Coors Light Twenty Three. Your daughter's future husband will not need to have a home repair skills. <laughs> I I tell them, look, <laughs> it's funny because I tell them that yeah, I, I tell them straight up. You're probably gonna know whoever you meet. You're probably gonna know more than they do. Most likely, but you can't rub it in their faces, man. Like you can't, you can't use it for evil. You gotta be a do a do gooder <laughs> with your, with your skills. So even if they they I don't know I don't know they're trying to do some maybe they try to do a tile backsplash and you can give them some pointers or something like that. Um, <laughs> but don't be clowning them. You can't just be clowning them and tell them that they trash that they all oh, man is working like trash man and tear it down and you do it yourself. Uh, now work with them. It's not their fault, man. You gotta, you know, you think about it. Where are they supposed to learn? Like nowadays, they they there's nothing in school anymore. They said they took all them trades out of school. So unless unless you know somebody that's gonna teach you something, I don't know how you how you gonna learn it. Uh new construction. Like do some new construction, backyard landscapers, solar panel, bird guards, garage finishing, closet builds, garage storage systems, door installation, fan installs, etc. Money. I'm telling you, it, it, you are you are absolutely right. Like the, and that's all I see. Like I I was driving down the other day because um I got a, a guy that's the house, I think the house they just paid is like 1.7 uh, million. They pay for the house. And he want, he, I mean, he basically wants to gut the house. Like, there's all kind of stuff he, he wants he wants done. And I, I mean, but realistically, I'm be honest. That, the house not really that impressive for the amount that they had to pay for it because inflation's hitting everybody. Um. So, I just. But when I look out, it's just like you know you drive and I look for that type, kind of stuff, you know. I'm over here doing doing what I'm doing. I'm doing all this little stuff in this house, putting up a million uh, safety bars and all this little stuff. But then I got, uh, I you know, I did all started with all the little stuff, pictures and hanging TVs and all kind of stuff like that. Now we're going to doors. He just doesn't like the doors, so we're replacing the doors with with the with wood look doors. But um, it's just a bunch, just a bunch of stuff that I'm, I'm doing in this house. And then I said, so I'm working. I look across the street. They're building the house. So I see everybody over there. I see guys that are doing the network, uh, security system, guys that are still putting siding up. I mean, you know, ride down the street. I see a truck for California closets. I mean, it's just there's money out here. So, you know, I don't want to see no, I don't want to see somebody doing DoorDash and 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 Uber Eats. And complaining because the pay is too low. When just get you a skill, get get a skill. Like it's like I mean, you saying garage garage finishing, closet builds. Like I I used to do closet builds, just custom closet builds. <clears throat> I'll do doors on a closet build. <laughs> I won't do cabinet doors, but on a, on a closet build, I'll do that. But oh, the closet systems and and garage sources, all that doors. I tell people all the time the way I started making money. I did. I was doing decent, but I was still struggling because I didn't know how to price. And I it was said, and I thought in my mind maybe it was because I was under, like you know, I was finding these leads under handyman, right? Under being a handyman, so people were just expecting something cheaper. I said, you know what? I'm just going to just start doing doors as a door specialist. My wife was, <laughs> my, my wife was like, "How are you a door specialist?" I said, "Cause I said so." Right, I said I was a door specialist. That's what I am now, and that's what I did. And I are and that's because I was a door specialist, and I advertised as a door specialist. People paid me good money for fixing doors, and then you'd be surprised how many people's doors get kicked in. Like, what's, what's going on out here? One of the best best things I learned how to do, and I was making a lot of money doing it 
was people who had two by six walls. You would think because so many houses were getting built with two by six walls that they would just have stock doors now that had two by six frame, but they just don't. And then if you go to the store and you want to buy a jam leg for a door, for an exterior door, they're all for, for two by four walls. To get a two by six one is like, I think one jam leg, I, I think at the time, remember last time I looked, it was like $150. So I bought a, uh, a planer and I just started making my own, making my own jams for uh, two by four walls. I mean, for two by four doors. And man, I mean, make it a killing. I mean, pure custom, make it a killing. That's side out to see if someone's listening. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, that good advice. Uh, no, I appreciate that, but it's 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 the truth, and that's what I tell them. You're gonna have, you gotta learn. You gotta learn. Somebody gotta know it. Some somebody's gonna have to know how to do something, because. I know what I know when me and my wife first got married, I did not have money to pay somebody to do anything. So it was me trying to do everything myself. And um our house got really neglected because I was spending so much time at work and I just couldn't I wasn't gonna I just wasn't gonna pay somebody to to I wasn't gonna pay a kitchen to upgrade the kitchen. Man, stop. Please, there's no way thousands and thousands of dollars. I didn't it was like who has this kind of money? That's where you know your mind is at. You're in your when I was in my twenties. So I don't know. Handyman process. Good to see you, Daryl. Hey, what's going on, AJ? Man, good to see you too. Yep. So I don't know. We'll have plenty of more discussions because I need to go ahead and get out of here, man. It's been a little over an hour and a half, uh, but we'll have plenty more discussions about uh, lead generation and different methods and all that. But hopefully today. Was a good overview. You got some details. Maybe you know. Maybe you didn't know. Uh, maybe some things you could try out. Um, not all companies are terrible. Leave Angie alone. Uh, stay away so you know you can stay in business. And um, that's it, man. So, oh, one uh, preacher man. How my doors? <clears throat> my doors were chopped up with a matic big pickaxe. I bought. Oh, goodness. I bought steel welding flats to reinforce the frame. Thought of building a plywood door. What's the strongest? Oof. Man, your doors were chopped up with a pickaxe. Bro, I'm a, I don't know, man. I don't know what you got going on, man. I don't think I've ever heard that one. Uh, bought steel welding flats to re reinforce the frame. <laughs> um, you could I don't know what else you're going to do to reinforce the frame besides if you got steel that's the, the door itself the strength of the door I mean like I said unless you get a steel door But I don't even know if they sell like you know the you know you'd have to get a door and put one of those say, security doors in the front, one of those steel security doors. Uh, a, a solid a steel door is gonna be super heavy. Cause if you I mean you could do whatever you want to the hinges. I mean, like you said, a fiberglass door, somebody will somebody could cut right through that thing if they were trying. I mean, look, somebody's trying to get in with a pickaxe. I mean, my goodness. That's about you need one of those. One of those security doors with the, uh, you know, the, the steel steel security doors in front. But the hinges, yeah, I mean, reinforcing with metal, man. I don't know. I don't know what else you can do besides that. But building the door out of plywood, I don't think plywood's gonna plywood. I don't think plywood's gonna be much uh, different than anything else. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Steel doors had the foam cores. Yeah. So, uh, and besides the security doors, I don't, you know, I don't know. You might have to electrify that thing, man. 
<laughs> something. Goodness, been in force field. Uh, Doug C, appreciate you. Billy C, Daryl, what's up, man? Love the content, brother. Hey, I appreciate you coming through. Uh, preach, man, it's becoming a bad neighborhood. Uh, it, it sounds like it. It sounds like it, man. Like I told you, you had to. I don't know. You had to get futuristic. <clears throat> you had to, you know, build a put a, a moat like a trap door under the floor mat or something. You ever seen Monster House? <laughs> it's a little, little kid, it's a movie with little kids. My, my kids used to watch it. it might be have to be like that. You know, somebody with a pickaxe. We got we 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 don't we don't need them on the streets. <clears throat> Jeremy Fish, my new favorite YouTuber. Hey, appreciate you. Good luck on your growth and success. You deserve it. Spitting straight truths. That's all I know how to do. <clears throat> so that's it. You, if you come to me, if you if you want to know something, I'm a I'm gonna give you uh I'm gonna just give you what I know exactly how I've done it and. The one benefit with somebody like me is that I've done it all. <laughs> so when you come in and you have no business experience, uh, you don't have any mentors at the top. YouTube ain't what it is now. There's not a lot of information. What do you do? Even uh, YouTube for like forums on Facebook, they were all brand new uh, when I first when I first started. So I couldn't get any information a lot of times, man. You just I'm winging it. So I did anything you think of. I did it. So I, like I said, from lead generation to um, property managers to realtors to working as a subcontractor to doing public work, you know, working, um, you know, on, on public property. That's another that's another good lane to get into if you can in your state um, is, is doing public work, working at schools and, and things of that nature. You got to be able to pass background checks, but there's money in it. Um, I done it. Like I said, I, I used to go up, go an, over an hour away to, to do work. Uh, I've added new things on. Um, for a while, I was heavy on appliance repair, and that's a that's another one. We'll we'll you know we'll talk about one day. I'm not, and I'm not the expert on it, but I can tell you what it's it's lucrative. And if you're mechanically inclined, that might be an, another direction you want to look in. And like I said, there's a, there's a lot of work out there. But that they they work with a lot of warranty companies, which I've done too. I just had one sent to me today. It was a dryer for um, Liberty Home Guard. Just sent me a Samsung dryer uh, for a Samsung dryer repair, but I couldn't take it. But yep, so that's all you're gonna get from me is just the truth. Um, so, course die twenty three. Real quick, do you use Instagram? I am. I have Instagram, and I'm trying to get the time to, I'm going to start posting, but the Instagram is going to be more like it'd be mostly reels and it's just going to be, you know, it might be something I'm on a job and just, Hey man, it's something I thought about right here. This uh, what I'm something I'm doing or, you know, I took a video the other day, how I had my trailer loaded up uh, because people ask me sometimes, uh, you know, I have to take sheet goods. So I had a bunch of T-111 or, and stuff on the trailer and how I fit it in there and lock it in. It's just, you know, so that's what the Instagram is going to be, but there is an Instagram page. I just haven't really uploaded it. I got one of my daughters who's, that's supposed to be her job coming up is uh taking the, uh, dealing with the Instagram. So, uh, Preacher Man, thanks. Uh, also, Book of Eli has a good scene with Denzel. <laughs> I do, okay, I'd check that out. I, for some reason, I've never I've seen the equalizers and all that i never seen the book of Eli. Never seen it. So I have to check that out. But anyway, y'all, time for me to bring this to an end. Stay safe. Be blessed. And remember, if the trades don't work, nothing else does.